Hi Piano Cats, I'm Dennis and this extensive video is dedicated to the so-called damper or sustaining pedal. In this video I will explain some very important key points and two basic ways to use the pedal. The pedal on the right is called a damper pedal because it lifts and drops all these dampers that open strings and stifle them from vibrating. The first function of this pedal is very evident. When in use, the note lasts naturally as long as the string vibrates or until you change the pedal by lifting your foot. But there is another function, and this is really interesting. When the dampers are open, the strings react at each other, they resonate, and something happens that uh, Paul Badura Skodev, a well-known pianist and Mozart expert, has very poetically called sympathetic vibration of other strings. But not every string resonates with any other one. Only those react with the vibration, which have certain frequency ratios with each other. Each string of those has something which is called overtones. For example, for this lower C, the next overtone, the first overtone, would be the C one octave higher, then one fifth higher, this G, then one fourth higher, another C, and then one third higher, big third, and then small third, another, and then they go, and so on. And as you see, each time the distance between overtones is getting smaller. First we have octave, then fifths, then fourth, then big third, major third, minor third, and so on, and it goes smaller and smaller. So the very famous and very funny trick, which many of you might know, if I press this C silently and play any of the string among its overtone family, I will clearly hear this sound resonating on that string. For example, if I would play the C one octave higher, I still hear it on that string. And for example, if I would play this note, I also hear it. So if I would play, for example, the whole chord, I would hear all of those notes. But if I play another one, an irrelevant one, it won't work the same way. So for example, for this key, it doesn't really resonate. But this one, resonates really well. So it's like with memes, if you don't know the context, you won't find them very funny. If they don't make you resonate. This overtones trick may help in certain situations. Of course, this is not a beginner's technique. It's just an illustration of our possibilities. For example, in the beginning of Bach English Suite number no. six, we have a very long D, which lasts for five bars. It actually can't last for that long, even on modern pianos, especially because traditionally this part it, mostly is played not really fast. Harpsichordists thus repeat this sound somewhere in between just to prolong its life. However, here's another way to prolong its life on a modern piano. Andras Schiff, for example, takes the lower D one octave lower silently, then fixes it with the middle pedal. This is why we need the middle pedal. When we press some certain note and press the middle pedal, this um, this damper would not fall down. And this helps to prolong this bass because we may hear the overtones of the silently pressed notes. And first of all, the next D, which we need to prolong because this is the first and the strongest overtone of it. So it would sound like... As you see, I still have it. This note is still, and actually the next one, so both of those overtones are still alive. The use of this pedal allows us to enrich the sound, to bring overtones into play, and as a side effect to extend a loudness limit. A note played with a pedal comes in a rich halo of overtones. That's why this pedal is called soul of the piano sometimes. Let's just compare how would sound the end of the famous raindrop prelude by Chopin without and with the pedal. So I have this uh, very beautiful ending section. And 
then I would separate it and play without the pedal. So as you see, I don't have any resonance because other strings are blocked. They don't react on my B flat. And now with the pedal. See, it's much more beautiful. I hope my microphones allow you to feel the difference, but it's really huge. As we have an optimal hand posture for piano playing, there are some tips for an optimal pedal use as well. First thing first, make sure that your heels are always stand on the ground. Stability in the feet is very important for a solid piano playing. The best foot posture is not parallel to pedals, but slightly turned aside. We use the ball of the feet to press the pedal. Or if to be more precise, the connection part when the ball of the feet connects with your toe. If you use only your toe, you might end up with tension issues and pain in the feet. If you press it with the rest of the foot too far away, you'd use more effort and couldn't maintain the finest control. Try not to beat the pedal. You might even not notice it while playing, but other listeners will surely do and will most likely be irritated by it. Some well-known Russian teachers, I'm not going to tell you the names, even tied the feet of students to the pedal with a stripe sometimes, so they would get used to stay in a contact with pedal all the time. Usually piano pedals in most modern instruments are tight enough. So in order to release the pedal, you just need to relax your foot. And when you don't need to use it, the foot may just stay relaxed on the pedal. You don't need an additional tension to hold it. Thus you might spare the lot of energy. At least it works for me. Of course, I don't know how heavy are your feet. So if I have a weight center in my heel, I may just press pedal with the ball of my feet and then just relax the feet and the pedal goes up by itself. And the rest of the time when I don't need to use it, I just keep my foot absolutely relaxed and it's actually enough. Of course, you have to be very careful with older pianos and e-pianos because by such instruments, the pedals are lighter. This is the same principle which I explained in my video about the tension-free plane. We don't really need to lift our fingers each time. We may just release them instead. There are two types of pedal notation. You may see the PED sign, it's where you should apply it, and a star sign for the release. Or this graphic sign, which means the same. Due to its graphic nature, one may notate a pedal change a bit more precisely. However, Please do remember that pedal indications are usually just recommendations and usually, well, in most of cases, I would say, need some adjustment and refinement. The first basic type is a direct pedal. It means pressing the note and the pedal nearly at the same time. Of course, after making sure that the previous harmony or note has fully disappeared. Especially if you're playing legato, the pedal should be applied slightly later in this case, after you release the previous finger. This type is very useful in many classical pieces. For example, in Clementi Sonatina in C major, I may take the pedal on the first beat and lift it on the second. And then in the next bar, number nine, I might use a direct pedal in order to juxtapose the legato and staccato. So I will stress the slur with pedal, then play without pedal. Or a similar story with the Mozart sonata, also in C major. I would take a short direct pedal to help the long notes in the right hand sing. But I take it away quickly, otherwise with a lot of pedal it would sound more like Chopin than Mozart actually. Many beginners frequently ask when should one change the pedal. The most basic rule for beginners is to change it every time when you have a harmony change. For example, when you move from one harmony another one. 
when there is a melodic line that sounds blurry on the pedal. We also have to consider that the more distant a musical style is, the more accurate and economical the pedal use should be. So we should be much more careful with pedal in Mozart and Bach than, let's say, in uh, popular music or piano covers. Just because the damper pedal was invented actually only in the uh, late 18th century and didn't get today's significance immediately. It was used then rather sporadically for special effects. I may play something like that, for example... With a lot of pedal, although I have those dissonant notes, but it would sound very much appropriate because the piece is written in a very modern, popular musical style. So it sounds just fine. But I would never allow myself to play Bach or uh, Mozart or even Beethoven or Schubert like that. There are actually some experts who blame any use of pedals uh, in, uh, in Baroque music, like in Bach or Handel, for example. I find it a bit too extreme, although I can understand, of course, very well the strive for authenticity since this sustain pedal, as well as any other pedal of this instrument, just didn't exist during Bach's time yet. If you are new to piano playing, you might have even no idea how serious are the disagreements even between world-famous artists in regard to pedal use. The kind of feeling that Bach should be dry, which I'm very much against, because you just go to a church and listen to an organ and tell me if that's dry. The amount of reverberation, the amount of overhang, if you do a skip, it'll sound like a hiccup. I have been seriously attacked on this by a very great fellow pianist, I will not mention the name, who said, you, you, how, can, how dare you not use pedal in Bach? And I say, why, why should I use pedal in Bach? Because all the great pianists of the past have used pedal in Bach. Is that an argument? <laughs> you cannot play like if you are like talking with your mouth full. You have to talk, speak clearly, articulate. We should just remember that pedaling is a matter of both common sense and taste. For example, if my melody repeats the harmony sounds, harmony notes, I might play it with just one pedal. But if it moves with the help of some dissonant sounds, I would most likely change. For example, here in the Chopin waltz, all the sounds, they form one chord, so it's absolutely fine to play the whole bar with pedal. But later, when I have a lot of dissonances in melody, I have to clean it all the time. And to rely more on my fingers if I want to produce a nice legato. Another common reason to use a direct pedal is to mark a dance character of music if it is a case. For example, in most of Chopin waltzes, I would take a pedal on the first beat and lift it on the second or the third beat, most of the time very gradually. Then you might feel the waltz character better. So I would emphasize the first beat with pedal. The second most common type of using the pedal is a late or delayed pedal. It means that I press the note first with my finger and then take or change the pedal. This type is very commonly used. It allows us to avoid gaps between harmonies and build longer musical line, allowing music to flow naturally. The main challenge here is to make your foot move up and immediately down, delicately but quickly, while holding notes with fingers. The easiest way to master this technique is just to make it very slow at first. So you play any chord or even just note, you may play just one note, with your finger only, and then take the pedal. And then when you proceed to the next note, you press it first and then slowly change the pedal, very gradually. And then the next one. And then you may do it a bit faster, so simultaneously with my finger, which is going down, my foot is going up.
Then you can try the same thing with chords. Play a chord first and then change the pedal. When you will practice that in a slow tempo, I would really suggest you to try to achieve a very smooth movement of your leg because if you move your leg too fast you would have a noise. In the C minor prelude of Chopin I should take a delayed pedal obviously to connect uh, these harmonies. I change the pedal of course after I play the next chord. However, it is important to consider that the lower register is so powerful that I need to wait for some additional time until the strings stop resonating completely. A rapid pedal change here would not be enough. Each piano is very different, so you really have to rely on your ears. There is no recipe. For example, this is a brand new piano just from the shop. I think it, it has been in use just for a couple of days, so of course uh, the dampers are really new and they stop the sound really quickly. So if I would take the chord with a pedal and then release it, the sound would go almost immediately away, although you can still find a small delay. But on the older piano you should really be very careful. For example, just recently I have practiced this prelude on the uh, very old, almost 100 years old Bechstein, which is a marvelous piano, but the sound goes away not that quickly as on a new one. So I had to wait almost one second until I could press pedal again. So in this case, my pedaling of this piece would be something like... Quite often one must combine those types within one piece or even one phrase. For example, in this Chopin's Nocturne I would start with the direct pedal on the strong beat, but then I would use a delayed pedal. I would change it possibly here and then here. I would not change it in the second half of the bar at all because it sounds beautiful, just one harmony as you see. And then here I would use a delayed pedal. Here is a very interesting spot because as you see I have uh, two grace notes. And of course they would not sound very clear on one pedal. It sounds very blurry. So what should I do? I should reach the principal note first, hold it with fingers and then change the pedal. So. And then I would use a direct pedal to mark a beginning of the new phrase. Delayed with the control. And then... And here I have a very beautiful uh, passage. But there are a lot of dissonances there. So I have really to be very careful and must probably to change pedal on the each eighth note. And maybe even not use pedal at all at the end of the passage. Mm. Many pieces, however, provide us with some uh, interpretational opportunities. We may influence the character of the piece by using a direct or delayed pedal. For example, while playing uh, an another Chopin's Nocturne, also in C minor, with a direct pedal, I may imitate a deep sigh, make the music breathe between those expressive exhalations. So with the direct pedal, it would sound like... Thus, the music will move on with some 
effort which might help me to increase a drama and tension in the piece. That would actually be more contrasting with the middle section of the piece that I would play on a delayed pedal then. So. If I use a delayed pedal in the beginning, the music will flow more naturally and would have rather lyrical, nostalgic character. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel not to miss the next video where I will explain more advanced and interesting stuff about the pedal use. Have fun playing piano!